Mr. Joe. How did you see him kind of increase the pace of the offense and get into you know his uh, better shot quality as the game went on? It looked like he was kind of stagnating early against the mismatches, and then as the game went on, got more comfortable playing with pace and space. Uh, I thought he just did a good job dictating the pace of the game. I thought the first four shots he missed, I think two or three of them were good shots. Um, that's just the player that he is, so uh, he stuck with it. But the thing I like is uh, the offensive rebound that he got and uh, continued to play at a high level defensively. You know, hold them off the three-point line, particularly. Yeah, I mean, I think that word just gets to such a trigger word around this time of year. We didn't make too many adjustments. We played a little bit harder. Uh, we played tougher. We dictated the physicality and the tempo of the game, and it's the simple things uh, that you have to do under a higher level of uh, stress, higher level of adversity. So, I thought our guys did a great job of dictating that today. Coach, they say there's four guarantees in the world, and that's life, death, taxes, and a spicy series between the Heat and the Celtics in the playoffs. With the volatility that these games have, game one was super one-sided, game two was one-sided for the other side, game three is one-sided again. How do you approach these games given their volatility? You just have to focus on the things that you can control going into every game and then knowing every game takes on a life of its own because both teams are constantly changing, adjusting, looking to find small ways to, to gain small advantages within the game. So uh, there's certain things you got to go into every game and then you got to be very quick uh, to uh, adjust or to give you what that game is giving. So no, I mean, ever since I played these guys, no one game has been the same. So you just got to keep an open mind, but you got to bring, you know, the certain things every game. Happy to have the gym. Yeah. So what did you like best defensively? I mean, held them under 85 points and just 12 in that first quarter. Yeah, I mean, just uh, individual defense, uh, team defense. I thought Drew was great. I don't know when he got his first shot, but, um, you know, I thought he dictated the defensive tempo of the game. I thought Tatum answered the call defensively. Uh, I thought uh, KP and Al did a great job. I thought everybody, I thought our bench uh, came in and, and really pushed the pace on both ends of the floor. So uh, just connected, tough, physical, uh, individual defense, team defense. And then after game two, was it a point of emphasis to get KP going early? Um, I mean, it was, it was a point of emphasis to, to just break the layers of the defense. So uh, I mean, he still took the same amount of shots. So. Um, but it's important to getting him involved. It's important to make sure um, that you know he has an impact on both ends of the floor because he's important for us. Hey, Joe, over here on your right. What do you think sparked the second quarter offensively? Uh, I think some of it was turnover. Some of it was our transition and our pace and uh, just able to get some easy shots. Uh, able to move the ball, get to the second side. Um, kind of an ugly first quarter for for both teams. You only scored 21 points, but only gave up 12. What did you like about the way you responded after giving up as many open shots as you did in the last game, and just the way you were able to? to hold that defense uh, when the offense was struggling a bit early? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was ugly. I thought it was just physical tough. I thought, you know, we got some good looks, didn't make them. They got some good looks, didn't make them. I just thought it was uh, just a rock fight at the beginning of the game. So once the game settled in, we were kind of able to, you know, take what the defense gave us and, and kind of go from there. Sort so along those lines, you're talking about the physicality. What, when you're watching, what are like the indications to you that like it's there on a night, the things you're seeing, um, that it's at the level you want it to be, and that kind of progresses? Uh, it doesn't slow us down. Uh, you know, we're able to play with a certain tempo on the offensive end. Um, you know, defensively, it's just our connectivity, uh, how we're able to kind of do both, stop the ball and get out to guys. I think that's, those are important. KP, you got him going early, pick and pop, running him off of like pin downs after the way that they were able to guard him last game. How much did you want to kind of free him up to get a shot going early? I mean, he took the same amount of shots as he did last game. He made four more. Um, but it, it's important that we get him going on both ends of the floor. So I think just getting him involved is important, uh, moving him around. Uh, but he has the ability to create indecisions. And so I thought his, uh, his rolls were good. They put pressure on the rim. But I thought his pops were good, too, because he uh, you know forced some pockets and some two-on-one. So... Uh, he's got to be involved on both ends, and uh, he's a huge impact for us. And then Peyton was able to pretty much get into anybody defensively. He had that play where he, like, pressed Robinson out of running a play, and then he just fumbled the ball away. Just 
when when Peyton like plays with that inc- like extreme confidence on both ends, how does that change? The I mean, it, it starts with him, but it's a bench in general. When they can, when you can change tempo of, of a game by putting in different lineups and have different guys, I think it helps us. Uh, takes the pressure some off of those other guys. So he's been tremendous for us, dictating the pace and really dictating the physicality of the game. Coach, uh, Tyler Hero was a great playmaker in the first game. Um, what was the adjustment uh, to defend him in tonight's game? Uh, just play harder, uh, be more connected, play more physical defensively. Joe, what has the last 72 hours been like for you in terms of preparation, in terms of having to make adjustments, in terms of kind of reflecting? Obviously, it was a monumental game uh, in this series. Not, you know. I don't want you to be demoralized. I'm not Thank trying you. to throw my words out. I'd say monumental is a little extreme. It's too. a little much, a little extreme. It was All right. a good game. Good game, big game. Uh, uh, you just have to find that balance of uh, focusing on what's most important. I think sometimes when you have a lot of time off, you could easily start to come up with all these things. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, the game's pretty simple. And uh, you got to find the simple things that you can execute, the simple things that you can take away. And then how do you just uh, bring the right mindset and the physicality? To me, I, I, I know it's... Uh, it's mundane, and, and the playoffs create a lot of hysteria, but there's no difference between a regular season and a playoff game. You just got to bring it mentally, physically, emotionally. You just got to bring it, and you got to execute. And so it's just preparing yourself uh, for that. Were you at all, did you wonder whether you guys, your guy, you guys would bring it? Like, or were you convinced yesterday or before the game, okay, this is it's going to be different? Uh, I mean, I trust our team. I mean, I'm, I don't expect them to play perfect, and I don't expect series to to be easy or to go a certain way. But I trust them, and I know they want to win, and I know they uh, they'll do whatever it takes. And I trust their preparation, and I trust who they are. So I, more than that, it's kind of like just play the game, you know. So I'm glad we don't have two days before the next one. What were the keys to limiting them to 32.1 percent shooting from beyond the arc, but also only giving up six second chance points from the second quarter on? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, you have to close out to guys. You got to take pride in individual defense. You got to come back and rebound. I think that's important. Joe, just kind of to follow up on that, the perimeter D in game two was certainly not like it was tonight. Did you make a conscious effort with your team to make sure that they could close out on threes? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Glad. Jason. All right. Was it as simple as make or miss, um, or was it more something they did to really flatten out your offense from the outset? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they they had set the tone with their disposition. You know, on, on their end, they started the game with uh, some deflating offensive rebounds and the threes. Uh, that gave them a little bit of a cushion. Uh, offensively, you know, early on, I thought the process was was solid. We missed some open shots. Uh, you know, that plays into it, but then – that led to more mistakes going down the other end. And then their pressure, you know, once they got up uh, double digits, their pressure started to pick up. And then you do have to credit them. They they took us out of, you know, um, stuff we would like to get to. Uh, they were the more physical team. They uh, bodied us, bullied us uh, on screens, got through stuff, uh, uh, distorted screens, um, everything flattened us out. Um, you know, once we got past that first six, seven, eight minutes of, of the game, you, you, so you have to credit them for that. They were the more physical team, the team with more, uh, you know, physicality and force uh, on both ends of the court. Some of it's missed shots, but what did they do differently on Tyler that maybe made him less of a playmaker today and maybe forced him? Yeah, out? they stayed at home a little bit more uh, on the shooters, but uh, it also depends. Like if we if we execute executed with a little bit more intention. Um, you know, if it if it would have loosened up, uh, we won't know that that answer. You know, necessarily. Uh, once they started bullying us and and bodying us and getting us out of any kind of trigger or action, it, it was it was easy to flatten us out at that point. Nobody was open, and uh, we were left you know end of possession with just going one on one or dribbling through against you know all their size. The switching at times still seemed to stagnate them as they kind of chased matchups, but they ended up with a pretty high offensive rating either way. Did the switching, did the one on one defense have to be better or were they just making Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, they played with a lot more force uh, than we did. You know, this is uh, who can get to who. You know, this is what, what it sometimes ends up being in, in the playoffs. 
uh, and they definitely got to us. Uh, started with the, you know, on the glass, uh, that just gave them a little bit of life. You know, once they, they get to that, that those are uh, momentum shifting and uh, uh, enthusiasm inspiring plays, you know, when they're flexing and doing all that stuff off of uh, second chance opportunities. That, that's natural. That every team does that. Um, but that kind of fueled them. Uh, then they got easy ones, um, you know, either fr from some mistakes or lack of communication. And then it's the one on one. You know, they have that ability. Uh, you have to check uh, the boxes uh, before you earn that. Uh, and then then you have to do what you have to do, you know, to get that stop. And none of it's easy. Um, we're capable of doing it, but uh, we didn't check a lot of boxes before we got to that. So you're dealing with a, a, a lot. Uh, you know, they they have uh, some very good shot makers. Is Duncan just at a point right now? It's just hard to get him in there with this situation and his back. No, the limited no. minutes tonight. No, um, you know, I, I was looking for some kind of spark once we were down 20. Um, you know, Duncan's not going to make an excuse for it. I'm not going to make an excuse for him. Uh, you know, we have uh, our guys. We uh, we have enough to, to get the job done, um, you know, and and uh, we understand the challenge, and, and that's what our competitors love uh, about this series. Uh, we know we have to, to play hard, and we also have to play well. Um, but at that point in the second half, we were down, you know, 20. I was just looking for a spark. And similarly, Kevin's minutes have been very limited. Is that just a matter of when you don't play zone as much, it doesn't fit? And your it thoughts on moving Thomas in there instead? Yeah, again, basically the same answer I just gave you. I was looking for a spark once we got down 20. Um, this is not an indictment on anybody. Things move fast in a playoff series. It was tough to get a read on anything when we were playing out of that hole, um, you know, for – most of three quarters uh, of this game, um, you know, so we'll, we'll get to work uh, tomorrow uh, and um, work on getting a better version of ourselves for Monday night, which we're fully capable of. We, are, we understand that. Uh, we have competitors. Uh, nobody feels good about this in, in our locker room, but we also respect Boston, what they're capable of. We know what, uh, how we have to be connected um, and have an incredible disposition also with uh, discipline and, um, you know, making the right plays on both ends as well. Thanks. All right, cool. Thank you. Comes to the room with Bam and Tyler. Questions for Jalen? Jalen, what allowed you guys to play so much better tonight right from the start. Um, were you able to relax more, days between games? What, what was it? Uh, I think just mindset. I think we uh, put an emphasis on defense, trying to make them uncomfortable a little bit. Um, you know, they had a slow start. Uh, we had a good start on defense, and uh, I think that kind of opened up the game. John. Jalen, defensively, what, what was it that you guys were able to do? Is it as simple as like just playing harder and picking them up uh, a, a little bit higher, or was there more to it? Uh, a little bit of that. No dare shots. Um, respecting those guys' capability, um, the, the NBA players, and they can make shots on any given night. So um, treating them accordingly, closing out, um, just making them uncomfortable. And then on the other side, just executing the offense. The series has dragged out for, you know, you have two days in between each game, a little bit unusual. Um, what have the last couple of days looked like for you, just wanting to bounce back from this, and what, how different does it feel to play on the road versus at home? Um, no difference. It's just, you know, obviously, you know, playing in front of your home crowd is, it gives you another level of energy, et cetera, but at the end of the day, it's basketball. Um, so um, no difference, but looking forward to, you know, playing on, uh, on Monday. Um, less time in between, get a rhythm. Uh, I feel like we're still getting it going. I think we still got, you know, another gear to, to kick into. So I'm looking forward to Monday. Jalen, uh, the second quarter was huge for you guys to build a comfortable lead. And a lot of the shots in that second quarter came from the mid-range in a series where the three-pointer has been key to winning these games. What role did the mid-range shot play today in you guys being able to steal this one on the road? Um, every game has its own has its own story. Able to steal this one on the road. Um, every game has its own has its own story. Um, uh, so you know you want to take what the defense gives you, 
obviously, you know, you know the math is if you got open shots from the three, you take them. Um, but, you know, if they're giving up, you know, certain shots in the paint or in the mid-range, anytime we get two feet in the paint, that's good for us. So, um, you know, taking advantage of what the defense gives. We got a lot of skilled players on our team that could do a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, making them pay for whatever they give up. Jalen, uh, coach said that there's no difference between between regular season and playoffs. That you you guys just need to bring it and execute. Do you see a difference, or do you follow what what he said? Um, I think there's a difference. You know, for sure, it's a lot more intense. Um, the pressure is a little bit up, but like at the end of the day, um, it's just basketball. So we just come out and execute and beat a harder playing team. Um, we shouldn't see a difference. We should still be able to have the same success. So. Um, I'm looking forward to the next game, one game at a time. Uh, Jalen, uh, from from your perspective, uh, Chris Porzingis, I mean, what he did tonight, especially coming off of game two, I mean, he outscored his point total in the first, like, five minutes of that first quarter. What did you see out of him in, just out of the gate in terms of his focus? And um, what, what do you think was the difference compared to what we saw in game two? Just being aggressive. I don't think he was looking for calls, especially being on the road. I think he was just, you know, embracing that, you know, physicality of the game. And he came out with that mindset. And that's what we need him to do every night. Jalen, uh, you said mindset. What is the principal difference between last year mindset and this year? Thank you. Um, last year is last year. You know, now we're, we're here and we're in 2024. We got a new team. And we learn from our experiences, you know. Um, um, and, and now is the time to show it. The whole world is watching. So. Um, I think we're excited, you know, we're excited to brace every step of the journey and just taking it one game at a time. Jared, then Adam, then Garrett. Peyton's had a few games where he just comes in there and just kind of changes the whole tempo of the game but on both ends. He kind of like had that. You could see he just kind of had it in him tonight where he just wanted to be super aggressive and get under their skin. Just how did he do that tonight? Yeah, Peyton, like his energy has been fantastic for us all year. Him like just making shots, him making plays, him getting on the glass, you know, Peyton, um, Peyton is a dog, so like we, we look forward to him being able to make those plays down the line in the playoffs, uh, but he did a great job tonight. Jen, you mentioned like no dare shots. You mentioned these are all NBA players who you know can make open shots. What was the process like over these couple of days where you guys decided there would be kind of a little bit of a, a change in scheme and kind of the agreement that this is what this game needed from you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good. You know, on any given night, you know, you know, teams can come out and hit a plethora of shots. You know, they had a record-breaking night um, the other day, but you know, we don't panic. Um, we watched the film, we broke it down, seeing where we can make some improvements, and we come out and we execute. And I thought that's what we did tonight. Um, but it, it calls for that. You know, everything ain't gonna go and be perfect. We just got to make sure that we stay together and um, we keep learning from our mistakes in real time and, and executing down the stretch. Final couple questions, Gary, and then. Jalen, what was Joe like the last couple of days? Obviously, it's a big game. I and mean, what was he like in, in terms of his mannerisms and having knowing that adjustments need to be made after game two? Um, I didn't notice a difference, you know, from Joe. I think that, you know, once we seen the game, we didn't overreact. I thought Miami played incredibly well in game two. They shot the hell out of it. You know, I thought we, you know, executed our game plan. It's just that Miami had a, a really good game. Um, and tonight, you know, we wanted to come out and make it a little bit more uncomfortable. Um, but it wasn't a lot of adjustments that were made. Um, we just got to come out and make sure we're the harder playing team. We take away some of the stuff that they got easy and then just play basketball from there. MGM Remix Sports Media. Jalen, you guys were in sync offensively all night, and you guys moved the ball exceptionally well. As one of the leaders of this team, what were your messages in, in the huddle, you know, to keep that going on the course of this game? Yes, sir. Make make the right play. You know, this is what, you know, we've been working hard for our whole season. So, you know, these moments, you know, just breathe, relax, um, see the game, you know, trust your teammates, trust each other and just come out and do what we've been doing. You know, um, it's just us against the world and uh, we got each other's back. Thank you, Jalen. Tyler, the one thing we know about the playoffs is there are adjustments to the adjustments and then readjustments. What did you see different from them defensively that sort of changed the look from you tonight from what we saw on Wednesday night? Uh, I thought they um, picked up the pressure, um, you know, tried to speed us up. 
um, take us out of our offense, extend our catches. And um, I thought they did a good job of that. You know, especially in that first half, we were, I thought, moving too fast and not taking our time. It wasn't the same um, offensive outlook that we had in the second uh, game of this series. Specifically against you, though, they've been showing so much kind of help toward you whenever you kind of get close to the paint. What did they do differently toward you, maybe to limit your playmaking or kind of change the way you played in game two? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're still protecting the paint. It felt like, um, you know, they did a couple of different um, adjustments, you know, with, when Drew wasn't guarding me, just randomly coming over and um, picking up the ball and making the ball get out of my hands. But, you know, we have a bunch of guys on this team that can you know, continue to hurt you know, them from, from three or, you know, driving. And it feels like, you know, we watch the film and we can figure out a way to generate those three-point looks with um, the defense that they're playing. When you're looking at a team like Boston, obviously the record says what they are, but do you feel like it's almost like you need to have a, a near-perfect sort of start to the game? Because I think you guys had 10 points off of those turnovers that they you know, capitalized on. Do you feel like that needs to be cleaned up to sort of, sort of start? Uh, yeah, our, our starts um, have definitely hurt us. Um, I thought in the first game, you know, game one obviously started with the offensive rebound that set the tone. And then tonight, you know, there was a couple of different, you know, ball times the ball was in the air on the floor that we didn't at least put the right effort to, to come up with those. Um, and obviously they, they crashed the glass a little harder. They sent four guys. Um, and, you know, when, when a team like that sees that they – um, have a we or we have a weakness of not boxing out. They're going to continue to do that, and that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the game. So, you know, definitely get, getting off to better starts, and um, I think it starts with you know those ball when the ball's in the air and the ball's on the floor. We have to come up with those, you know, because that's a big you know tone setter um, throughout this series. You you still took nine threes, but as a team, you guys took twenty eight. Did there, the adjustments that Boston made, especially with closeouts and how much they're helping, did it feel like that the other guys on the team that had made so many threes in game two had kind of earned the respect of the defense at that point? Uh, I don't think so. Honestly, I think those shots are still there. Um, you know, if you listen to what they've been talking about, it's all they thought they had good enough to decent contest in game two, and um, they don't think that we can shoot and make those again. So honestly, I think the shots are still there. I have to do a better job of creating and um, making the right decisions when I get into the paint. Um, same with Bam. And uh, just continue to make the right play, like I've said, you know, really this whole series. And our guys just had to shoot the ball. You know, they um, are open and just got to let it ride and let it go. Tyler, obviously, they had that uh, the rebounding edge slightly too, and and you mentioned uh, it is a momentum builder for you guys overall. But um, where else do you think they were more physical in this game and against you guys in some areas? Uh, yeah, I think the number one thing is offensive rebounding. You know, they're sending four guys, um, and they're sending guys to rebound. It's not just run in there; it's actually go up and go get the ball and create opportunities for them to, you know, kick out and get threes. Um, but I think overall, besides I would say like three or four minutes throughout the game, I think in the second half, they were the most physical team. Um, and they, they definitely uh, put, you know, brought it to us opposed to us bringing it to them. And, you know, that, that hurts us because, like I said, the, the momentum has kind of been won by these, you know, small skirmishes where they're getting offensive rebounds, loose balls and stuff like that. And it's just creating extra, extra havoc. Tyler, you mentioned them being more physical and them kind of trying to speed you up. There was a kind of a big gap in the turnovers and points off turnovers. How much of their full court ball pressure was leading into that and how important kind of is that battleground for you guys in this series? Yeah, um, you know, we don't have the quote unquote point guard right now. Um, but we have a bunch of guys that can get us into offense. So I think that they're going to, like they did tonight, continue to try to bring that pressure to us so that we can kind of get sped up and make the decisions harder for us to make, you know. And um, I feel like we can do a little bit of the same to, to, to them, kind of get into them, speed up, the, speed up the ball a little bit and, you know, kind of force them into tough decisions. Tyler got chippy. He had that back and forth late in the game. He picked up the tack. Like, was that just a result of frustrations or physicality being down? Uh, just part of the now? game. Um, it's competitiveness. It's all good. Just one more off that. It seemed like 
there was a little bit of off-ball physicality and just trying to get free. It seemed like you were getting held a little bit in that range. Is it, is it a little tough to kind of find your spots off the ball than trying to, you know, come off those those screens in that way? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, they're doing a lot of different things, you know, off the ball, just holding me, holding my jersey, like doing a bunch of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's competition. It's going to make me better. It's going to make my team better. And um, I'm here for it. I'm excited. Like, we're here. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right, Tyler, thank you. Fam, <laughs> uh, so much of the playoffs is about game-to-game adjustments. What what do you feel like they did differently maybe on the defensive end um, that impacted you guys on offense? Man, I feel like, honestly, we just, we just made uh, mistake after mistake on offense, you know. Not communicating, uh, throwing the ball away, you know, like just turnovers that shouldn't shouldn't happen in the playoffs. Um, and we need to check that box. But Am, when facing a team like Boston, is it really crucial to not even just have a fast start, but at least an efficient start? Because obviously game one was the 14-0 start, and then here you guys had 10 points uh, off the turnovers for Boston. Can you just kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, like I said, uh, I don't think we really brought that dog tonight uh, like we did in game two where it was, you know, set the tone from the jump. Uh, and we didn't do that tonight. So, you know, obviously when you don't have that that type of dog mentality, you know, you can get blown out by 20. I mean, you guys, as a team, you guys, three-point rate was down. You took 28 threes. Was that... Boston respecting the shooters more after what they did in game two, or is it like you were saying, the turnovers and the lack of execution not earning the threes? Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, I feel like a lot of a lot of our guys passed up open shots that they should have shot. Um, and, you know, we weren't doing that in game two. Everybody was letting it fly and we was living with the result. You know, I feel like you can't, once you get down six or seven, you can't not shoot the ball. Uh, and I feel like that's going to be on film. And, and Bam, you, you mentioned, like, right from the start here, you mentioned, obviously, from the mistakes. You were vocal in that first half at one point, like, right before the half, just in the huddle with them at one point. Um, what stood out to you in just, obviously, being vocal to grab that attention with your teammates? But at the same time, they did also out-rebound you guys slightly. What's that also from, like, the physical standpoint of the game? Uh, I mean, it's going to be a physical series. You know, this is the Miami Heat versus the Boston Celtics. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a dog fight. And if you don't bring that dog, this is what happens. Uh, you know, and that huddle is basically, you know, just addressing, you know, the, the lack of detail. You know, letting guys run in on a free throw and get a tip-in layup. Uh, those type of things that can't happen in the playoffs. Uh, you can get away with it in a regular season, but, you know, possession by possession matters in the playoffs. Two-man action with you and Tyler generates so much for the offense right now, especially with Jimmy out. Did they guard it any differently than they have in the first two games, or was it pretty similar to what you guys have seen? Nah, pretty similar. Uh, you know, we, me and T just need to make better reads. You know, we get in the paint. Uh, anybody's in the paint, kick it out. And this time, I'm, I'm going to yell to my teammates to shoot the ball. Bam, you mentioned the turnovers earlier, and there was obviously a big gap in turnovers and points off turnovers. How much did the Celtics' ball pressure in, the, in full court bother you guys, and how important is this battleground in the series for you guys? No, I just told you we got turnovers because we was careless with the basketball. I don't think it really had anything to do with their pressure. Uh, so, you know, to that question, like I said, if you watch the game, we had lack of day school turnovers, you know, un, un, unforced turnovers for no reason. And I feel like that was the difference. needing to make adjustments after game two. What did that look like, and what do you think were some of the key adjustments going into this game that led to this result? Just making sure our spacing was right. Uh, 
you know, that's a really good defensive team, and um, they try to force you to play in the crowd. So make sure that we knew, um, you know, what we were trying to get out of each action and making sure that we were in uh, our right spots to give each other the right space. What was the feeling like as a team coming out of that game, too? It was a lot of conversation. Like, what was just kind of the mindset of you guys after a loss like that, and how did you kind of rally back together from it? Uh, I mean, you never want to lose, especially in the playoffs. But, you know, no, nobody was down, right? Uh, it's a long series. Uh, we were confident that we could come down here and, and, and play better. Um, and that's what we did tonight. We, we played better than we did the other day. Jason, on your right, what do you think generated the offense in the second quarter? Uh, one, we were getting stops, right? Uh, they're a tough team to play against when uh, they can set up their defense. So getting stops and being able to run and transition, find cross, message, cross matches and things like that. Um, so the easy answer was we got stops. Jason, they, they missed a lot of the, the momentum shots that they were getting in game two, um, stringing a run together. What was it that kind of prevented that? Was it something like when you let a team get comfortable, they start to hit those, and, and you didn't let them get comfortable? What, what went into that? Yeah, like you said, uh, I think our attention to detail and um, on the defensive end of the day was a lot better than the last game. And, um, Tried our best, right, to just not let let them get comfortable, get in the rhythm. Um, they're going to make shots, but uh, just try to make it as tough as you can, as often as you can. Yeah, Jason, defensively, and Joe said, there weren't many adjustments. Was it just a matter of picking up the intensity and, and taking pride in guarding your yard? Yeah, giving up offensive rebounds and, um, you know, closeouts. We could have had some better closeouts um, in, in game two where they just, you know, we kind of gave up some walk-up threes and things like that. Um, just better at contesting. Uh, it was, a, you know, kind of an effort thing. Kristaps <clears throat> said that game two was his worst game as a Celtic, and these last two days have been really long for him. So what did you see out of him is his just, like, demeanor coming into this game, and then how important was it for you guys to get him some easy shots in those opening minutes? Yeah, I mean, probably our most important guy on our team. Uh, for what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, no doubt in my mind, I knew he was going to have a better game and bounce back. Uh, and, you know, just the way he started out the game, uh, on both ends of the floor, being active, right, when he's protecting the rim, contesting shots, you know, we're a whole different team. And then Peyton, he just kind of came out with that aggressiveness on both ends. You guys are this super talented team. You know, Miami's this great scrap team. How important is it to have a guy like Peyton who can do that you know, kind of play on that kind of level, too? Uh, it's great, man. Peyton uh, is the most, one of the most confident guys I've ever been around. Um, any given moment, you know, he, he walks out there like he's the, you know, he's the best player. And um, to have that confidence is, is, is special. And we need him to be like that, right? He's being aggressive on both ends, um, being able to attack closeouts and create his own shot, create for others, um, and to have that off the bench. Is, is special. Jason, I just want to go back to the start of the game. You started tonight similar to what you did in game one, and how important that is for you. Curious for you, how important is that to just get that start going? Does it set the tone for the rest of the game? Uh, I mean, yeah, you would love to have a big lead to start every game, but it was just more about uh, our attention to detail on both ends of the floor, mainly on the defensive end, right? Can we, can we start the game? and not let them be comfortable. Uh, you know, regardless if they hit shots or not, they just try to make them work for everything that they get. Jason, um, your coach said uh, you played a really hard and strong defense tonight. Uh, why strong and why hard uh, to defend this Miami Heat? Thank you. Because uh, they got a lot of actions, right? They, they move a lot. Uh, they're not really going to play isolation basketball, so just got a lot of actions. Uh, you know, they saw, set a lot of flare screens and rip screens and, and ball screens, and they cut, uh, so they just keep you active. Jalen mentioned me on the floor. You guys are still kind of figuring out your identity in these playoffs. What does that look like to you in your mind? Um, and everybody knows how talented we are, 
you know, can we beat a tougher, harder playing team? You know, you combine that with our talent level, I think it's going to be hard to beat us. Uh, but, you know, can we start off every game, you know, essentially punching first and, and, and not reacting? Um, that's a, a test for us that we got to be up for every single night. M MGM Remix Sports Media. Jason, you were able to draw many fouls utilizing that patented up fake and getting heat defenders in the air. Was it a goal of yours to get to the line as much as you could? And how do you feel that effectively impacted your team in this victory? Uh, I mean, yeah, you want to shoot as many free throws as you can. I think uh, just the way that they were playing me, uh, you know, the series can be very long and you got to switch it up from game to game. Uh, keep them honest, so shot fakes and things like that, see if they bite. Uh, you know, and I, I had a couple of them tonight. Jason, like you said, you guys are a very talented team. For the past couple of years, you face also the Miami Heat. What's up with them that, that you either like or hate uh, that always gives you guys a, a hard time? And they're a great team, great organization, very well coached. They play hard. Um, and they're going to compete every single night. Thank you.